third hour of Wake Up Tucson, when you hear Francis Albert, that means we're in the third hour of what's going on. Remember on Monday, 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 I like originally you had Red Maxwell instead of Ted Maxwell. That could be like, that could be Ted's professional poker player name. I could see that. Southern Arizona Leadership Council. We didn't deal in Ted on the Maxwell. end of the table at Binion's, right, with some blue sunglasses. <laughs> Red Maxwell from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we got uh, Brad Huff, Arizona, uh, from uh, Pottery Fiesta. And then we were just talking about him with our next guest, uh, Dr. Galgiani. Joaquin Ruiz, Director of Global Space Defense and Environmental something. The greatest title ever now, Galactic something. Uh <laughs> Former dean of science, the science school, will be here also for a full hour discussion. So we'll catch up with Joaquin and all of his uh, his new titles, as we like to say. So, uh, as promised, seven nine zero two zero four zero. We were just talking about this gentleman with my brother the last time he was on, and how a couple of the, we we're talking about songs like Willie Jones and different things like that. Let's go right to the phone. Country music superstar Charlie Daniels. Charlie, good morning. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing out there this morning? Not too bad. You were just out here doing a show. How did that go? It went wonderful. We had a great time. We always have a good time, too, son. We've been, gosh, we were playing there for, I, I don't even remember when we first started playing there. Sometime back in the 70s. We've been coming there a long time. We always have a good time. The uh, I, I, I noticed uh, that you guys are still running about 100 shows a year. A uh, hundred plus, a little over that. Hundred like plus, that. and I know you're what about forty nine years old now. How is it uh, doing a hundred shows a year? <laughs> well, it's wonderful, and I will be eighty three <laughs> in October. Uh, I, I I cannot imagine my life without doing what I do. I am so blessed to be able to make a living doing something I love as much as I love this. And as long as it's a good Lord's will, and people want to hear me, I'll be out here rocking. I love the title of the biography. Never look at the empty seats. Tell me about that title. I love the name of that. Well, it's kind of a take on uh, is a glass half full or half empty uh, kind of philosophy in it. When you're a young musician, you're going to have a lot of empty seats because you'll play anywhere you can. If you're serious about it and you want to get ahead, you'll play anywhere you can for anybody who will come and listen to you. So you go in the hall and you got got uh, half house or something. You say, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm play half a set and yak yak and not play hard. Big, big mistake. You give it all you've got every night, and then when you you entertain people, and the next time you come back to town, they'll come back and see you and bring somebody else with them. That's the way you get a following. So, therefore, don't never look at the empty seats. Look at the full ones. Uh, as, as a guy who grew up in the New York City area, believe it or not, my brother Joe, who's three and a half years older, brought an album into our Italian-American brought-up neighborhood called Million Mile Reflections. Uh-huh. And that... uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, it's an odd situation, but you would think our first really big markets would be Dallas and Atlanta and places like that. They weren't. They were Long Island, New York. Right. And, yeah, I mean, places like that, we uh, we used to do Nassau County Coliseum and all the all – the, I think we played every hall on Long Island, every college, <laughs> every hall. Uh, but we, in fact, now, right now, I'm in Atlantic City. I'm not too far from your, your home place. But, uh, yeah, we, it, it's, I, I was really surprised when that started happening that, uh, that our first big markets turned up in the, in the northern part of the country. But, yeah, that was, uh, that was what was happening back in those days. So, in addition to The Devil Went Down to Georgia, some of my favorite songs, of course, are Mississippi and Blind Man on that. And I'm sitting here going, why is this album, what, I mean, the, other than the big, huge hit, right, there was this crossover into that, that kind of rock world. Did you even think about that when you recorded this album? Well, not necessarily, because our stuff had been, cro- you know, oddly enough, uh, back in those days, now we're talking 40 years ago. Talking the early 70s, cro- right? Yeah. Yes, yes, early 70s. Our stuff actually crossed over more from the rock side to the countryside than than vice versa because we had we were our most of our play was on what was called album oriented stations at that time and uh the country station if you remember back in those days country was a lot different from what it is now it was not very adventurous and ray price like, uh, and those kind of things yeah, yeah. right yeah Char- charlie music i love it all 
Charlie Ed Alexander yeah. here. I uh, I was on uh, KL. I, I put KLPX uh, Rock Radio on this uh, in this town forty years ago, and uh, and when we did come on, it was it was a Charlie Daniels band. It was all Southern rock. It was uh, uh, Mar- you know Marshall Tucker, Charlie Daniels, Leonard Skinner. I mean, that's what was that's what we were playing, man. That was the was, first. The first live radio broadcast, the first time we ever played at Tucson was a live radio broadcast. I think it was probably on your station. Mm. Uh, 1974, somewhere along in there. Yeah. When did you come on air? When we 40 years ago, so that would be 70. <coughs> God, my brain doesn't work. Was that's that 79? 70, that's 79. And, 79. And, 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 so that was yeah, with KWFN yeah, well, and the other station, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were yeah, all we, playing that we, stuff. We've been coming out there for a long time. We've had a good time out, out in that part of the world. But uh, it's hard for me to imagine that that uh, went out of Georgia's 40 years old. And so uh, that's a long time. And, of course, when I was a kid, that was kind of the line of demarcation uh, between old age and uh, being young. And it uh, was uh, when you turn 40. You don't trust anybody over 40 type situation going on. Yeah, but so I guess it kind of got ingrained in my mind at forty when something was forty. I really got, started getting old. So when I was told it was forty, it kind of uh, oh, kind of knocked a hole in my in, you know in my thought about not that in a sad sort of way or anything, but the idea that gosh, that song's been around for a long time and it's still cooking. It still still plays on the radio yeah. places. We still have to do it every night. You know, absolutely. We're talking to country music superstar Charlie Daniels. Love having him on the show today. In the Never Look at the Empty Seats, uh, we're, we're a radio uh, show that supports a lot of singer-songwriter country acts here called the Arizona Originals, Charlie. And you have in your book, uh, quote, the wee bit of advice for those who would like to pursue a career in music. So give us the top two or three things that you would tell a young artist today. Well, first of all, the, the basic thing you got to do is make up your mind. That's what you want to do because it's not easy. It's not you're gonna have to stumble and fall and get back up and stumble and fall again to 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 get anywhere. So this is a it's a tough competitive thing. It really is. You just got to keep beating on doors till one of them opens. And if it closes in your face, go back and beat on it again. You know, you, it, the basic thing is if you want to do it, never give up. If you're not convinced that you want to do it, don't try it because it will break your heart. Uh, stay home and play the holiday in lounges on Saturday night. You know, don't. Don't come out here because you're going to get your heart broken. <laughs> so in this day and age, because things you were just talking about, album-oriented rock stations and how you had R&D folks that were you know, playing your stuff and guys like Ed who were getting your, um, your music introduced to audiences. So in this day and age of streaming and iTunes and all this stuff, what, what, what's, the, what's the 21st century advice for uh, up-and-coming artists? Just keep on keeping on. Learn how to entertain people. That's the first thing. Uh, you know, if you're a good singer, that's wonderful. If you're a knockout handsome guy, that's great. You know, but uh, eventually all that's going to go away. You're going to stop having top ten records, but you can keep a career going if you know how to entertain people when you walk on stage. That's what this is. This is not just the music business. This is the entertainment business. And if you learn how to entertain people, you can have a long, long career. Otherwise, when the top records stop coming, if you're just uh, depending on your looks or your sex appeal or something, stay home. <laughs> Don't even start out because when you start wrinkling, your your career's gonna go away. You are right because that, that 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 translates to other occupations where you can see somebody say they they do this or that, but they don't look like they're really enjoying themselves doing that. Yeah. And you can see it with some 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 young artists that are kind of like going through the motions. Well, that's bad. That's a bad way to do it. You're not going to last if you do that. It's, uh, you know, people get if they have a couple of chart records, some people get the idea it's going to last forever. They think they found, they think they found the formula. There is no formula. There is no formula to you can't. You're not going to you're not going to cut a hit every time you you come out the gate. And you're eventually going to stop doing what you are doing. So learn how to entertain people. And by the way, I hate to interject a sad note into. The conversation. I just got word a few minutes ago that Eddie Money has passed away, and I kind of want to say tribute to him. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, our, our Ed just reported that about twenty minutes ago. So we yeah. are well. What? How long have you known Eddie Money? Oh my gosh! I don't. But when he first started, when he had uh, two tickets to Paradise, we he toured with us quite a bit. 
over the years when we, we were getting packaged with rock acts. We did quite a few shows together. What It was a sad note. What other rock acts were you packaged with in the late 70s, early 80s? Well, who didn't we package? <laughs> <laughs> Just hit the road. Harry Clapton. Eric Clapton, the Rolling Stones, uh, gosh, just uh, of course a lot of the Southern acts, Alvin Brothers, and Marshall Tucker Band, Leonard Skinner, uh, ZZ Top. Uh, I, I don't. I'd have to go back and look. To what what are the what, them all, but. what other musician or vocalist has Charlie Daniels learned the most from? <laughs> I learned a lot, not so much the musical style, but from. A lot of other attitude and entertainment and that sort of thing. Elvis Presley he changed things when he came. He made it possible. He took the he took rock music out of the orchestra pit and put it on the stage with two guitars and bass and drums, or made it possible for a country boy to play rock music. Him and Carl Perkins and a few other people. Uh, Dwayne Allman, insofar as excellence on an instrument that that is so far above anything I will ever reach, being truthful about it that. Very few people that ever reached. He was one in a million. Um, you know, Bob Dylan, insofar as writing a song, uh, in that when Dylan came along, he gave the industry a, a a freedom, you know, to do whatever you do. Go do it. Go do it your way. Like, don't, you know, don't worry about packing it all into three minutes and 20 seconds. If you need, if you need 10 minutes to do it, do it. Write about what you want to write about. Rhyme what you want. If it makes sense to you, don't make sense to anybody else, to heck with it. Go ahead and do it. You know, that kind of thing where when you sit down to write, you didn't think, well, I've got to write this song like everybody else does it. I've got to make it fit into this little mold, this little cookie cutter deal here. He broke the cookie cutter, you know, uh, Dylan and uh, some people that came behind him. So those people were very influential in my career. And my last question, because I know I only have you for a few minutes here is, uh, so here we are, you have always worn your uh, love of your country on your sleeve strongly, and we're in a world that it seems like we have a half the country versus the other co- half of the country. So give me the uh, Charlie Daniels take on being American and how we should kind of get past that, some of these political d- divisions, and keep moving. We need to seek the truth to start with. We need to think about ramifications when politicians make promises like, there are some promises being made by some of the people running for for president right now that are absolutely and totally impossible. And anybody that will sit down, anybody can add two and two and look at things that know anything at all about the way, work, way the world works will know that they are totally impossible. And we need to separate the truth from the lies. We need to separate the doable from the undoable. We need to take a long look at where we are right now and what we are doing. We have to have a strong military. We have no choice. We have to stop this crazy thing that's going on down at the border. We have no choice. We have to do some of the things we have to do. We have to take some fiscal moves. We have no choice. If we don't do it, we will not. In 10 years from now, we will not be the same country that we were. We will be vulnerable. We will be economically messed up. We will be bankrupt. We will be our national debt will overcome us to where we can't even make enough, take enough taxes in to pay the, the interest on it. It's the time to make some decisions. I'm not talking about political situations, but be careful who you vote for this time around on every level, local, state, and national. Make that person, if you believe in what they're saying, vote for them. But take a long, long look at what the ramifications will be two years down the road by some of these promises that are being made. I lied. One more question. What's Charlie Daniels love about America? Everything. <laughs> well, I can't say everything. I mean, I know we've done some. But I've, I've not been every place in the world, but I've been a lot of places in the world. I've, I've, I've been in a lot of countries, about 20, some 30 countries, something like that. There is no place like America. No place like America. We, nobody has our freedoms, our opportunities, our it, nothing. We got it all in this country. Atlantic to Pacific, if you can't find it between the Atlantic Pacific and the Mexican and Canadian borders, it don't need to be. We got mountains, we got deserts, we got oceans, we got lakes, we got streams, we got freedom. That's the big thing. If you want to make something out of yourself in America, you can do it. If you believe in yourself and you go out and get something done. God bless America. Charlie, thanks for the moment, man. I appreciate it. Great great interview, sir. Thank you, guys. Talk to you again. See you soon. That's Charlie Daniels, Country Music Hall of Famer.
uh, Hall of Famer in the Grand Old Opry. That's where I saw him last, was actually at the Grand Old Opry uh, November of about four or five years ago. Uh, I saw him right after the Lavelle sisters. He was amazing. So 8.22 in the morning. Now we're going to turn on a dime. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're going to go from Charlie well, something Daniels else that's amazing. to uh, country music uh, superstar and Dr. Uh, John Gal- Galgiani from doing... He's, he, the Congressman Schweikert uh, has been talking very highly of Dr. Galgiani in his work in Valley Fever. And we'll talk about that on Wake Up Tucson, 1030 KVOI The Voice.